Greetings, my friends. We're going to have a stab at this this morning. Uh, passenger, I did a demo of it the other day. So I thought I'll get it out the way. Summer solstice, apparently, today. Um, does not like it. It's just about to start pissing down. So rather than go out and get halfway down the road and then get soaked, I thought I would do this for you. All right, so passenger, let her go. It's a tri little tricky one, but if you follow this free idiot proof uh, Fenner way of doing it, you should be able to get the hang of it, all right? So download this, it's all free, of course. Make sure you tell all your friends that everything on my site is free. And for those that are new to the channel, a quick overview of what this all means. Little bit of tab at the beginning, basic, easy tab. We'll get to that in a sec. Capo, seventh fret. These are where your fingers are gonna go clearly, all right? One, two, and three. Very important you use the right, you know, the right fingers for the right, um, strings of course if you don't know your fingers are numbered from your thumb one two three and four just clear that up what does that t mean that means you're going to use your thumb to play that note which is a bit of a tricky bugger that's why it's 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 hard but Jimi hendrix did it and uh, lots of other guitarists and it does have its advantages um as you'll see but it's something that you've got to get used to learning how to do um all right so now these numbers down here what do they represent these represent your strings from one to six Anything that's you see that's written individually like this, you'll play those notes separately, of course. Anything in brackets, you'll pl play those notes, put them together. All right, so for example, you've got a six and a three, so you'll use your first finger to play the three because we always group our fingers like this, and your thumb will play the six, so six and three would be this. Okay, if it was six, three, and two, it would be this, if it was four and one, it would be this. Very important that you group your fingers in the right way. I'll have a quick overview on that. Sorry if I have to waffle for a minute or two at the beginning, but if I don't, you will never get it right. It will just sound shit, and then you'll blame me, and I'll say, well, you didn't listen, did you? So, quick overview. F finger one will play this string. Finger two will play this string. Finger three will play this string. Always in this track. Your thumb is going to bounce mainly between the six and the four. Don't be tempted to bring your finger up. Don't do it. Okay, six, four, six, four, and your fingers will look after these. Let's begin. Little finger on the second string at the third fret. We're going to play this little intro. Okay, and I did it in tab because it's easier just for that little bit. So, little finger, don't use any other finger, little finger. All will become clear in a second. Okay, so watch these fingers. It's a second string, so I'm going to use the right finger for the second string. Then play. Finger, uh, string number one with your third finger. Then play string number two at the third fret again. Okay, so we've got da, da, da. This finger hasn't moved. And then finally, this first finger will replace the little finger and play the second string at the first fret. Keep that there and put your third finger now on the fourth string at the third fret from the capo, clearly, not from here. From the capo all my references are from the capo all right and then you're going to put your thumb now this is the tricky bit your thumb has to play the bass string at the first fret so you've got to get it over the top this isn't the right guitar really i should have used my takamini it's got a narrower neck so you're going to hear a few buzzers from me probably okay definitely i would imagine so let's start off by just going over the motion of this uh, bass line you're going to be jumping from the six to the four. Let's just try this as a practice exercise. Put these fingers here for a minute. Now it's tricky to do that whilst holding these in position, okay? But that's what you need to do. So when you first have a go at this, just get that thumb there and just try getting that motion moving. Right, so we've done the tab. We're going to add our third finger there keep this one where it is now this finger is going to hammer on to the third string at the second fret so you'll end up with three in a row like this now i've called this chord f because it comes from this shape now i'm referring clearly to the shape of the chord not the chord itself at this position that shape would be c we guitar players that have been playing for years know that people who have just started to play or are just familiar with the with the shape names I've done it like that because I get a few people saying, oh, it's a C really, you should have called it C. It will only confuse people if I do that. I'm going to call it F, I'm going to call that A minor, I'm going to 
call that E minor, fret up, I'm going to call that G. We know that it's, it's, it's not the actual chord G, it's the shape I'm referring to, all right? So that's why I do it, for simplicity, all right? Um, let's, be, let's, let's begin. So we've done our tab. We put our third finger on the fourth string of the third fret, and then we're going to play a six and a three together. Why is it, how, how do we know that? Because the six and the three is in a bracket, if you look down below at your, at your paperwork. And we're going to hammer this, this second finger onto that third string so you get this sound. Okay? And then straight after that, you'll play a four and two. So we've got this. All right, let's just quickly go over that. There's your tab. Da, 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 da. There's your thumb and you, this is where it's, you can see it says hammer on and you're going to hammer on the third, the second string onto that third string and you've gone do dum dum. All right. Fucking hurt, did it? Stay on that shape and then you're going to play single notes six, three, four, one, six, three, four, two. See that? Six, three, four, one, six, three, four, two. And the count is below if you get stuck as to where those notes should land. All right. Okay, now take this third finger now and bounce it up to the bass string of the third fret from the capo and put your little finger on the second string of the third fret. You're gonna play six and two together because it's in a bracket. Then you're gonna play a one then a two, and then you'll see a two with a circle around it. And that's telling you that something's gonna happen now with that string, it tells you what's gonna happen. This finger is gonna replace the little finger there, at the first fret. So that last chord, that last G. Okay, I see it clearly on here. That's telling you something's gonna happen. Da, da, da. Oh, and then it's telling you that it's moved to the first fret. All right, put it there. Pretty straightforward. You've got to be, I mean, I call it my idiot proof way of doing it because you've got to be a bloody idiot not to follow it. It might be difficult to play, but it won't be difficult to understand, all right? That's the difference. And you'll only find this on my site. Nobody else does it like this. I developed it myself because I'm a bit of an idiot too when I'm come to working stuff out. Right, so we're now on to page two. Uh, we're on to an A minor. And again, it's got a, on the third string, you're gonna play five and three together. And on the third string, it's saying you're going to hammer on. Now, you could just hammer that one on, but I find it easier to leave this on and hammer them, these two both on. Even though I'm only going to hit a five and a three, I hammer them together. It's just easier from a you know, muscle point of view, as you will see. So I'm going to play the five and three, but I'm going to hammer them both on. I'm not going to strike the fourth string. I'm just going to do what it tells me, but I'm just going to take this one off as well. It's easier. Five and three, hammer onto the third string. See that? I could do this, but that's awkward. Five and three, then it says four and two on the same shape. Okay, and then five, three, four, two and one together. So I'll play those two A minors that you'll see on page two. Then it jumps to a G. Now I add that finger, even though I'm not supposed to, uh, I don't want to play it, but you might hit it by mistake, so put it on. And play six, three, and two together. Then a four, and then a three. I'll go from that A minor again. Stay on that shape, and then you're gonna play the little intro riff again, but with a, a slight difference. You're gonna play a bass note with the, with the opening notes. Six and two, because it's in a bracket. Then a one, then a two, and then this finger will drop to the first fret, as it did, remember the first time we did it? But it's exactly the same as that, but you add in this note here. Okay, so don't think it's anything too flash, it's just that one difference. And again, you will see the little instruction telling you that this finger will move from there, and it will be replaced by that one there. Okay, I'm doing all right here. It's only four pages and you've done two. On to page three. So this is what we got up to now. Forgive any buzzing. Like that. Okay. You find 
find sometimes when you play things slow, it's harder to do. Not bad. Okay, so we've just done the riff onto page three. Same shape as we did with our F, the F, exactly the same where you do the hammer on with the thumb over the top on the F shape. Six and three to four and two with the hammer. Stay there and then just follow the next run of strings, which is six, three, four, two. Now on shape three, all these remain, but you'll notice your little finger is now dropped on. It's a little finger, finger number four, and there's a circle around it to tell you that that's gonna go on there. And you're gonna play a six and one, and that one is gonna pull off. So six and one together, because it's in a bracket, and you're gonna pull it off. Then you're gonna play a four, then a three, and the three is open. So just bring these fingers off and play the third string open. Let me play that from the beginning of that page. Okay, there's the open string. Now while that string's open, you're gonna to move to this G, this one here, and this one here, just those two. You can put this one on if you want, but it's easier just to use these two because this one was doing something else before. So just play it like this on this particular shape. Six and two together. Let me do that again. I got lost, I'm too busy gabbing. That's it, sorry, six and two at this position. Here and here, not there, not yet. There and there. Six and two, then add your little finger, because it tells you two, then a four, and then a one. I'll play that again, that last shape. Now when that one is playing, these three fingers, these two fingers are gonna to move to the A minor position. Leave that one there. Let me do that one more time. See, though I use that one as a vehicle to be moving, it masks the movement. I'm leaving that on because the next shape and the final shape we're going to play is an A minor. We're on, we're on page four now and we play five, four and two, five, three, four, two, five, four and two. I'll do that again. Then we're going to bounce straight back to this G shape. You can put this one on if you want. In this instance, I would leave it off. I just find it easier coming from the A minor. Six and two together, then a one, then a two, and then that uh, second string of the first fret again, which again, we've already done twice by now. It's, so you'll know that one. What happens after that? We start again. too early to sing so I'm not even gonna bother all right so do you get the idea now I'm not gonna do the rest of the song because it just shadows the same chords and then it starts strumming them uh, and there's tons of great tutorials actually to tell you how to do that however you will only find the idiot proof versions of songs like this and many many others on my site because it's a Fenna original all right and remember it's all completely free Okay, that's the beauty of this, it's all free. I generate my income from my private students and my gigs and my shows, and I just love teaching people. So um, I hope you enjoy these free tutorials. Tell your friends, as I say, it'll, you'll never get charged on this site, not for, not for this anyway. However, if you come to my live gig, see that one there, Alternative Radio, if you live in England, check it out, um, Floral Pavilion we're doing in New Brighton, or check out some of my theatre shows. All right, I'll just put Rob Fenner in Google. You'll have a laugh because I've been I've been going a long time. Rob Fenner, F E W N A H, and you'll laugh your cotton socks off at some of the stuff from when I was about fifteen and beyond. All right, but um, yeah, that's fun. That's another story. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll be back with you soon. With uh, I don't know, I'll have to do a little catch up. Um, I've been in the studio doing another album. 
Um, so I'm just catching up on a few bits. So uh, I'll remind me of what I've forgotten because I'm bound to have forgotten something. So I hope you've enjoyed the blues you on and uh, passenger, and I will catch up with you soon. Until then, take care. Bye bye.